G'day, Jeff Lewis here from Seriously Series, and today, this video, it's dedicated to you, Dave. That's right, Dave Hickman. He's a fella who knows exactly what I'm about to talk about, but those of you who, out there who've asked the question, this is for you too. Now, what on earth is this here on the Series 2? Well, today I'm going to show you exactly what it is, why it's there, and why I think it's such a great modification for your series Land Rover if you can find one. So as always, grab yourself a brew of something slightly stronger, but most importantly, stay tuned. Apology for the light, but as I say to people, we do our best, but unlike Home and Away or Neighbours, we don't shoot in a studio. We shoot in the Aussie Outback, don't we? That we do. Anyway, on with the story and the video. So the Series 2 and I have just finished, uh, and along with Damon, going to all these four-wheel drive shows, and we've had a lot of people ask us about this. What is it? Now this is actually a modification that was available and produced here in Australia called a McNamara locking differential and top marks if you already knew what that was. But it's something so much more than a locking differential, it's also an upgrade. So in here is a specially developed or modified Salisbury axle and a Salisbury axle has a much finer spline than the Rover axle. The Rover axle, I believe, was 10 spline uh, or 8 spline. And the Salisbury axle in the earlier variants like this was 16. So what does a finer spline mean? Well, it means the more splines, the more grooves that you have on an axle, the greater the surface area that it has to engage with the actual differential or the planetary gears or the diff center in the middle of the axle assembly overall half shafts, you call it whatever you want. So that it allows that. Now, in the end of the Salisbury axle, there's actually been a hole drilled into it and there's a thread. And this thread allows this bolt to screw into it. And in here is actually, or a bit further in, is a large compression spring. And basically what this bolt does is pull the axle out of the diff center, essentially disengaging it. When we want to engage it, which I'll do in a minute, we take this bolt out, we put a bung in so we don't lose all the oil out of the, the axle assembly, and then we drive forward ever so slowly. The splines within the axle and the differential line up, and we hear an almighty fatung as the axle shoots in, and it's locked. That's it. No electricery required, no pressure of the air, or hot or cold air for that matter. That is it. Nothing more. And these were quite a popular modification. They do come up every now and then on Gumtree, and I think it's fantastic because I'll just touch on the advantages of it. Not only do you get to upgrade your axle so you basically never snap an axle, I know, that can still happen, but this has been in since 1985 and it hasn't snapped as of yet. So you can upgrade your axle. You still keep the rover diff center. You change the planetary gear in, in it to a Salisbury planetary gear. Uh, so everything's retained. So it looks underneath like a normal Series 2. So bit of mucking around, you have to rebuild your diff in the process, but well worth it. The advantages off-road is because you've got a locking differential, particularly when you're going through sand or if you're going up loose escarpments, shaley escarpments, some of you might call it, um, 
you don't get the tendency of the Land Rover bouncing up the slope or what you call axle tramp, whereas where the actual uh, vehicle bounces up, the wheel spins or accelerates and that centrifugal force as it's spinning then hits the ground really hard and puts a shock load through the axle which ultimately usually causes it to snap over time. So you don't get that because all the traction or all the power and the torque that's being provided to the rear axle assembly can actually be put down onto the ground. So it'll actually just crawl like a little tractor or a stoic donkey all the way to the top of the ridge. So really, really good. It makes, makes a massive difference, I think, uh, to these vehicles. So I use a, a lazy spanner, I use a larger shifter because uh, it can take quite a bit to undo uh, or do up these, uh, this bolt. And we just simply chuck it on and then we undo it. One bolt, we pull that out. And then a bung, we just screw that, make sure there's no sand in the thread. Oh yeah. And I put a, put a copper washer in there just to stop it sweating as much power or leaking oil anyway and then I just do it up firmly like so and that's it I'll hop in the Series 2 now and I'll start it up and you'll get to hear that signatory fatung and yeah, we'll be engaged. Well sadly no fatung uh, that time. Uh, when I was taking out the bolt there, uh, it didn't tend to sort of come out of the actual casing. So we must have just got lucky on this one occasion where the spline of the axle and the differential uh, obviously lined up uh, just spot on for the camera. But anyway, how do we disengage it? Well, it's very much the reverse process of what I did to uh, get it out. We take the bung out like so. We then get our bolt, and this is where it can take a little bit of elbow grease to disengage it. Now, I know what many of you are thinking, and I know what many of you might want to say. Well, I've got an e-locker or an air locker, and oh, I don't need to do any of this. And that's all well and true, but I think the fact that this diff lock has been in use for 40 years and is still working and doesn't need, there we are, it's getting easier so I know it's out. Sometimes it can be a bit difficult, but you make sure you have it in neutral. Anyway, what was I saying? So it's been in the vehicle 40 years, it still works. There's virtually no maintenance that you need to do to it. Um, you've got the option of engaging it and disengaging it, which you don't get with a Detroit locker. The ARB air lockers are great, but they're air lockers. So the airlines, the actuators and all the rest will fail in time. Uh, E-lockers are no different. Um, you cut that positive or negative wire, it's all over. So, 
call me old school, call me whatever you want, but McNamara locking differential, if you can find one, get yourself one. It's a fantastic addition to your series Land Rover. Anyway, I've got a track to head down and an adventure to film and more. So watch this space. Click on that subscribe button down below. If you found this video interesting, useful, give us a thumbs up. It really does make a big difference. But the biggest difference that you can make here if you've been enjoying these videos, watching these videos for a period of time, please do. And I ask you from the bottom of my heart, please do check out Seriously Series on Patreon. That makes a massive difference. We can't keep doing what we're doing giving you these kinds of videos and more without your support there. So check Seriously Series out on Patreon and I'll catch you on the next one. See you then.